Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's have a look at the major US indices. And as of last week, week's action, we actually got above that, uh, that key level, which was at uh, 2940.4 on SPX. And I discussed this potential scenario in the last video. Now, obviously I had a preference for that being our, our hard uh, pivot there and to turn back down here in this C wave. But I did mention before that we had the possibility of having just this initial A up and then an A, B, C, D, E, triangle B wave, and then a C wave up for that larger B, okay? Or, I mean, you could make the case for A or one, B or two, and then C or three down. Um, you can still make that case. But for now, I'm leaving it up as A, B, and then expecting C down. Uh, and we'll only change that to outlook if we have a real, you know, devastatingly strong uh, wave down that doesn't have the characteristics of a C wave. But for now, I'll just leave it up as a, you know, forecasted ABC down. Uh, but that being said, so there is still a nice triangle. It's not that there wasn't a triangle uh, in play here. It's just that it wasn't just a simple triangle, the entire pattern. It was a triangle that interrupted the middle of this larger ABC up for this B wave. And that can definitely happen. That's that's what makes trading triangles potentially tricky, uh, at least if you're trying to anticipate which way it's going to break before it actually does, uh, which, you know, I certainly attempt to do that at times, but, uh, you know, sometimes it, it breaks the other way. In this case, it thrusts it up. All right, so that being said, we have the 786 retracement of this overall decline from the all-time high. And that's kind of the retracement of last resort. Basically, it needs to find resistance and turn down from around this level uh, for this for this to remain kind of a bearish count. Uh, but if we keep going higher here and we blast through the 786, well, you're knocking on the doors of all-time highs and then you know likely get at least some follow-through if you break the all-time highs. Now, technically, we could retrace up to 100%, uh, although as far as a trade goes, I really want to see this fail here around the 76 retracement. So when we did break this uh, this level here, I, I got rid of those um, September puts that I was in, uh, those SPX puts that I discussed in the last video. But here on Friday, uh, what I've actually done, I haven't entered a new position yet. So what I want to see, so I can see we're having at least a little short-term resistance here at this 786 retracement. What I actually want to see is, uh, and let me just kind of draw a little diagram. What I really want to see is some sort of initial five-wave decline. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily have to be this large. Okay, it could be a much uh, smaller, shorter time frame version of this. But I need to see something that kind of looks like that, okay? And then I need to see that first little three wave correction, okay? So basically, let's say we reject off the 76, go down in a nice little five wave sequence, bounce up in three waves. At that point, I'd be looking to enter a new bearish position with obviously the stop being uh, the origin of this little five wave down if and when we get it. So that's kind of the next trade setup that I'm eyeing up here. It's just not there yet for me. I mean, right now you're basically just, if you went short here, you're just saying, well, I'm going short off the 786, uh, and then maybe you just put your stop a little bit above that. Uh, but for me, I just want to see a little bit more convincing action here, a little bit more of a pattern to the downside develop, and then retrace up before I make a fresh entry. Um, because even though it still seems very unlikely, I guess the possibility remains, we could just somehow get up and, and go through all time highs. Uh, now it just seems incredibly unlikely given the pattern we're looking at here. Uh, this is very corrective looking pattern off the bottom. This doesn't look like the beginning of a new trendy move off the bottom, uh, but you just can't rule it out no matter what. Um, this is trading and there are no absolutes. But definitely for the next setup, I'm looking for a little, you know, initial move down on a smaller time frame, five waves down, get your first little bounce up, three waves up, and then that'll be my kind of signal for getting in and obviously having your, your stop just above the high at that point. 
So probably uh, this coming week here, uh, if that happens, that'll be the signal. And I'll certainly put out a video to uh, alert that if and when it happens. Okay, so there, there could be another scenario going on here. Uh, and I'll just briefly dive into it here on the daily chart. So uh, let me just clean up some of this old stuff here. As I don't think it's applicable to what I'm trying to say here. Okay. All right, so what I can potentially see here, so let's say we have this initial move up off those December lows. Okay, so that could be uh, perhaps an A up. Okay, it's possible. We could be working A, B, C, D, E uh, for a triangle B and then we'll be going up in a, in a C up here. So let me just maybe adjust the degree on this a bit. So bear with me. Uh, and then I'll, I'll clear out what I was showing here before just to show the alternate alternate uh, scenario. Now this, this doesn't look very pretty, so I'm certainly not leaning on this as high probability, but I still need to point it out. So let's say we had that initial impulsive wave up off the bottom. Let's call that an A. Then we had a three wave decline. And then this advance off the bottom. I mean, it's not the cleanest looking five waves. You might be able to fit some sort of, you know, corrective structure onto it. Again, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here to see how this could possibly resolve higher. So let's say that's our initial A down, B up, C down, D up, uh, let's see, E down, okay. And let me bump this up to, call it minor. Okay, so you can see there's a little triangle structure potentially in play there, although it's very ugly. It's not proportional. It's really kind of force fitting a triangle into this action, but it's really the only way I can come up with to explain a possible move up, uh, you know, to a new high and beyond here. Okay. So if you see what I'm getting at there, so off the bottom, A up, triangle B, and then another C up, uh, obviously to a new all time high. And if we zoom out even more, let me just, again, get rid of this older stuff here. So if we zoom out even more, maybe you have an initial three wave move down. This will be a three wave move up to a new high. And then you'll maybe have another corrective move down if we're in some sort of larger triangle or larger flat structure. Again, this is getting a little, little fancy for my liking as far as, uh, as far as the wave count goes. But I had to point it out because this is really the only way I could see this as far as the, the pattern goes resolving higher. I am still heavily favoring on the, uh, you know, the original scenario I point out there where we're just about ready to drop here again. But uh, we'll have to see how this plays out next week. If we go much, much beyond this point where we currently got to, much beyond that uh, 76 retracement, the odds start tilting more in the favor of that uh, unusual but still possible bullish outcome. All right, so that being said, we'll go to the uh, Thinkorswim candlestick chart. I'm just looking at the daily candlestick uh, here on SPX. So a few things I want to point out here. So we, have, we now have three unfilled gaps. Okay, so we have this initial gap here. To fill that gap, we'd have to go down to the high of that candle. So that's 28.9003. This candle didn't quite fill it. We got down to 28.9185. So we have a, a small gap here that's unfilled. We have another gap here that to fill it, we'd have to go down to the high of this candle, which is at 29.14.39. So that's gap number two that's unfilled. And then we have this third gap here. And to get to the high of that candle to fill the gap, we'd have to go to 29.38.84. So we have basically a triple gap up, three unfilled gaps. And uh, I mean, essentially all gaps at, at soon, you know, one point or another, sooner or later, all gaps pretty much get filled 
on SPX and just indexes in general, okay? So we now have three unfilled gaps in a fairly short period of time. Now on this daily candlestick chart, we have a doji star there on Friday. So we have a doji star right at the 786 retracement level. So a doji star is a potential reversal candle, but it has to confirm and start turning down. So we have a potential candlestick reversal signal right at a major you know, Fibonacci resistance level, retracement level. And we have three unfilled gaps in short, uh, you know, in, in short uh, time from one another. So that being said, it seems like there's a lot of reasons to go down here from the current levels. But again, in that unusual but still possible bullish scenario, we have to be aware that uh, it is still a potential situation where we'll go up and make a new all-time high without really coming down much first. Uh, but I still still lean pretty heavily that we got to turn down here uh, almost immediately. But we'll see next week. Now, we're also in the overbought condition here on the daily oscillator. Uh, so that's certainly you know right to have a turn down now that we're overbought. Um, I mean, you can see just over here an example of being overbought in the, on the oscillator and then we certainly had a nice turn down Obviously, it's not the only thing you look for, but combined with everything else we're seeing, the fact that we are also in the overbought condition on the oscillator, that's certainly good to see. It's kind of a complementary, um, you know, technical situation. Okay, now on the weekly chart, let's point a couple things out. So on the weekly chart, we had that nice bearish engulfing candlestick uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it did not confirm the following week. And now it's been invalidated, uh, at least that signal has been invalidated by turning up hard last week. So we got nothing here on the weekly candlestick chart, uh, no bearish candlesticks as of yet. But again, you will see something happen on the daily uh, well before you see it on the weekly. So on the daily, all we have to really work with here is this doji star potential reversal candle. We'll have to see how it trades, uh, you know, coming up Monday and then into next week. Okay, so that's SPX. Now on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we have a similar uh, situation. We have a Doji Star potential reversal candle. Uh, we're not quite at the, well, let's see here. I'll, I'll drag this down to the absolute low from the absolute high. So we're basically in between the 618 and 786 retracement on the Dow. So we haven't retraced quite as much uh, percentage-wise as we have on SPX, but very much a similar outlook. And also in the overbought condition here on the oscillator for the Dow. Uh, on the weekly chart, anything notable here to point out? No, it's very much the same, uh, same look as SPX. So nothing there that stands out. Okay, we'll go to the NASDAQ Composite now. And on the NASDAQ Composite, so we had a little bit of a weaker day on the NASDAQ than the other two indices. Um, surprisingly, it actually at a negative day. Um, so we don't have a doji star candle, we just have kind of this small bodied uh, red candle. So it's not a particular signal. Uh, it's potentially a little bit of a dark cloud cover candle. And that's just where you open higher than the previous candle, but then close lower uh, part way into the body of the previous candle. So potentially a daily dark cloud cover candlestick although that's not the, uh, the strongest of signals, but it's certainly a legitimate candlestick uh, signal. Okay, so we got that. We're in the overbought condition here on the oscillator. Again, we haven't retraced as much of the decline here on the NASDAQ as we have on SPX. So right now we're just kind of in between uh, the 786 and 618 retracement. Um, similar implications here as to all the other indices. We are looking to turn down here anytime uh, but still aware of the fact that we could, you know, in a less likely scenario, get to new highs without having a big pullback first. Okay, now on the weekly chart, I think it's going to look pretty much uh, the same here as far as the message goes. So we have a failed bearish engulfing candlestick from a couple weeks ago, just like SPX. And nothing here in the weekly uh, as of now that stands out. I have to wait and see how this one develops. But again, we'll see. We'll see some more information here on the daily before it uh, translates over to that weekly chart. Okay, so that's the NASDAQ composite. Now I'll go to the VIX. 
Now on the VIX, um, we have made a lower low on the VIX, but at this point, uh, anything above this level on the VIX will maintain our little technical uptrend intact here. Uh, so that's 11.69, we have to stay above there. Right now we've made a low down to 14.91. So this still kind of looks like a choppy, you know, three wave-ish corrective decline from this initial move up in VIX. Um, so this really is just kind of a inverse image of the indices. Where the indices we have this initial move down, this sharp move down, and then this corrective decline upwards. VIX, we have this initial spike up and corrective decline downwards. So this, this obviously translates into TVIX as well. So TVIX, we made a new low below its relative low that we had there. Um, but again, as long as TVIX can make a higher low above this level, okay, and I'll just quickly go to TVIX just to show that for those that want to try and trade TVIX. Um, hang on there. Okay, yeah. So the real level to stay above here on TVIX is way down here. It's kind of around that 12 and change level. Uh, and I guess the closer we get to that without actually breaking it, the, the better of a risk reward setup you're gonna have. Uh, but at this point, we're looking for TVIX to turn back up here anytime and we're looking for the indices to turn back down in short order if, if everything that's kind of been laid out here comes to pass. Uh, but as far as, I mean, you just don't have any evidence yet that you have a hard low in TVIX. First, you have to have an initial bounce up, a partial retracement down, and then that might set up another entry, uh, you know, entry opportunity with a tighter stop. But right now, you're just kind of trying to guess where the bottom is. So uh, it wouldn't be my my favorite thing to do to just try and say, oh, well, I think this is the bottom uh, and just pick that. So let it kind of have a reaction, have its first retracement, and then at least you have a a hard level to define your risk against. But yeah, that's TVIX, so we'll, we'll get off of that for now. But, uh, so yeah, basically the same idea in the VIX. Still looks like we're gonna set a higher low here and then maybe start trending back up. But we'll have to see what happens. Okay, now on the VIX, VVIX tool, we still don't have any signal yet. So we're basically in a neutral mode. Uh, we'd have to see some sort of, well, ideally we'd see some sort of divergence, uh, a fresh divergence between VIX and VVIX. Right now they're both kind of making new relative lows. So that's not really a divergence. So there's no real conditions in place there for a signal yet. And then we'd have to see VVIX get above its red moving average. We have to see SPX get, SPX get below its blue moving average. So right now there's no sell signal here. We're just waiting for this thing to, to do something. And obviously the market will start turning down before this signal is given, but uh, it still adds confidence when you get a fresh signal. It's just not there yet. Okay, well that's probably a decent update now heading into this coming week. So yeah, basically bottom line, we need to turn down here from you know near current levels. And if we don't, then I don't really see the trade. So as far, and that's really the most important thing we can analyze all day and uh, the only real purpose for me of doing analysis is to try and identify an attractive trade setup. So to me, if this just keeps drifting higher and higher and higher and higher and it doesn't reverse, I mean, that's not a trade setup. Sure, you could go long and, and hope that it just keeps going up uh, despite all these conditions that suggest it may not. But that's, that's not a good trade setup. Where do you put your stop? Do you put your stop down here? So you have a massive you know, massive stop and you're, and you're looking for maybe just a marginal new high. That's not a good, it's not a good trade setup, okay? But uh, if we do get a nice reaction here off this kind of 786 retracement level, so initial reaction down, say maybe we come down and fill this first gap, maybe we bounce up from there partially, stall out there, that's a nice setup with a clear stop, okay? A clear pivot to define your risk against. And then, so your stop would be relatively small, right? So let's say in that scenario, your stop is say this big and your potential reward, right? Potential reward could be, you know, significantly bigger, multiples bigger. So that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. 
heading into this week, but I just need to see a little bit of, you know, a little sign of it turning down. And I don't think, I don't think this will get away on you. I think if you're patient and if it works out this way, get that initial move down, get that first bounce up, that might be the opportunity to go for here. That's what I'm looking for anyways, heading into this coming week. All right, it's good for now. Serial Trader signing off.